Okay, so for this one we have um, determine the equation in the standard form of hyperbola that satisfies the given conditions. And we're given vertices and when we're given one of the asymptotes. So um, there are a couple of different ways to do that. I'm going to show it with the picture first because I think I think it makes more sense with off the picture, and then I'll show you the the math that would have gone with it. That's actually pretty easy, but it's maybe harder to see this without a picture. So what I did was I started off by graphing my vertices. So when x is zero, y is two. That's right there, and then four two right here, and then I knew that halfway between the vertices is going to be the center. So that's that little red dot, and I grabbed my center right there. And then I know that A is the distance from the center to a vertice. Okay, cool. So then that gave me A. The next thing I knew is that from the directions up here, I know the slope of one of the asymptotes is 2. And I know that the asymptote is going to go through the center. So what I did was I started here at the center, and I went and drew myself a line with a slope of 2. So I just went over 1 and up 2, over 1 and up 2. And right there, I am over my vertice. So that is the other side of that box that would define the asymptotes. And so that made my B4. Um, and then to fill in the equation from there, right, we just have it's uh, transverse x, so I'm leading an x. And there's my 2 squared for my 4, my 4 squared for my 16, and my, my center plugged in there. Um, so once you'd gotten the A and the B, that was pretty much all you needed. Um, another way of looking at that, because, you know, what if this was a terrible number and I couldn't just count over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2? Um, so a little bit more algebraic over here is we set up a ratio. We know that our slope of our asymptote is um, b over a in this case, um, because b is our vertical in this one and a is our horizontal, and that that is 2 over 1. The trouble is that doesn't mean that b is 2 and a is 1. It means the ratio is 2 over 1. You know, so this could be 6 over 3. It could be anything that reduces down to 2. Um, but once we had established these two vertices, that those were four apart, and that means my center's at two units in, and my, my A was going to be two, then I know I know that A, I can plug in right there, and just cross multiply that over, and boom, there's my B. So this is easier for sure, um, I think, but I, I'm not sure that that makes sense unless you're looking at the picture. So there's a couple of versions of it.